for our media, we'll be joined shortly here with uh, head coach Jake Spavadol from Texas State. Uh, looks like we've got coach on here now. Coach, would you mind give us an opening statement? Yeah, uh, you know, just overall, just kind of where we're at. I think we've had a pretty good spring, you know, a, a spring semester leading up to this point. You know, we had a good solid uh, six weeks of strength and conditioning. We just wrapped up our spring game on Saturday. Uh, so we had a solid five weeks of spring practice as well. So uh, I think we've had, you know, this is probably the most competitive we've been in spring since I've been here. And a lot has to do with just kind of the unfortunate ups and downs and of um, the issues of COVID and unfortunate injuries. Uh, we're probably the most experienced we've ever been since I've been here. And the depth's at a really good spot right now. And our practices have been extremely competitive. And uh, just really proud of uh, that the buy-in of these kids. I think the culture's right. I think they understand what they're what they're needing to accomplish, what we need to improve on. They're buying into it, and uh, they're making it as competitive as possible to make each other better. But we still got a long ways to go. You probably heard that a lot from a lot of coaches right now. Uh, you know, we got. You know, I, I told the team Saturday that, you know, you roughly got about 150 days until we kick off our first opponent uh, versus uh, Nevada. And and from there, you know, we, we've made a lot of strides and improvements to get to this point. Right? Where are we going to take it from there? And, uh, you know, they're going to wrap up their finals this week. We got about three weeks left of school. They're going to wrap their finals up. And then obviously the month of May, they got some time to get away from it and go see family. And and uh, we'll hook it back up in June and and we'll get after it. But. Uh, you know, I, I really like this team. Um, again, like it's just the, it's the most depth and most experience that we've had. They're making their strides every single day. Uh, I think they're excited to get this thing kicked off. Uh, they understand that it is a process and we got to take it a day at a time. And and uh, I think they're looking forward to the new members of the Sun Belt, uh, which uh, this league just keeps getting more and more competitive uh, every single year. And I think the exposure of this league and the respect of this league, uh, there's a lot of great things happening for this conference. So. Uh, again, fired up for this team and, you know, ready, like looking forward for the grind to, to keep getting better and, and uh, you know, looking forward to meeting all these new coaches here at spring meetings here soon in May. Good questions. All right. Uh, for our media on the call, type your questions in the chat and I'll read those aloud here for Coach Favidal. Uh Coach, to kick it off, you're able to bring a couple of transfers in at the quarterback position. What are you looking for as you're searching for a, for a new starter this season? Yeah, you know, recruiting is such a, a – you know, the it's an ever changing climate of college football right now and recruiting is changing on a daily basis. And, you know, uh, my experience is, is you got to keep bringing in quarterbacks. That's the one position that I, I've had the most success with. I've been fortunate to coach 10 NFL quarterbacks and and I've been in situations where you're going to have to replace them and and, uh, you know, injuries do occur. So. Uh, you know, Brady ended up hitting the transfer portal and and moving on to, to App State. And, and uh, you know, and that that leaves us where we're going to have to still bring in more quarterbacks. You know, like it's uh, you just got to keep bringing them in. And we brought in Lane Hatcher, who was from Arkansas State. So the Sun Belt is very familiar with him. And you have Dylan Markowitz, who's uh, his his twin brother plays for us uh, as an offensive lineman. He transferred in from Syracuse. And, and uh, you know, that, that competition is uh, the most intense it's been. You also got a, a guy named Ty Evans in there who uh, has been having a great spring as well. So it, it is very important to keep bringing in these quarterbacks because, um, you know, you never know what's going to happen and, and you got to keep them all uh, happy. Uh, I feel like I'm more of a psychologist. Uh, at times in that room because, you know, you can only play one quarterback and they all want to play. And, uh, you know, just with today's time in the transfer portal, you just got to make sure that you just keep developing depth as best you possibly can. Coach, uh, maybe could you talk about somebody that stood out in spring practice that you think could take on a, a larger role this season? You know, I've probably been uh, – I've been really impressed with uh, Richard West. He was a transfer from uh, A&M Commerce. He's uh, my right tackle right now. I think uh, – uh, he he is a guy that is a big six foot six, 300 and probably 15, 320 pound guy, very athletic uh, uh, from East Central um, High School in San Antonio. So he's right down the street. He, I think he's a guy that has improved tremendously, um, you know, just in terms of helping us out. You know, um, are, are we still talking about the quarterbacks or you, is this any position right now? Any position, coach. Perfect. And uh, like, I think he's going to do a great thing for us. Uh, I think Jordan Revels on the defensive side uh, has is kind of getting into his stride. We've now figured out who he is. He's been a three-year starter for us. 
uh, and now we're moving him all over the field. He, we ended up experimenting with him as a rush linebacker at uh, halfway through the season. Uh, he's been a defensive end his entire career, but now he's he's able to be athletic enough to move out in space, be a linebacker, be a be a defensive lineman, uh, if need be, very versatile as as, as well. But I, I think. Overall, across the board, we've got a lot of moving parts with guys that we're still trying to figure out where we put them. Because like I said in uh, my opening statement, we have a lot of experience right now. A lot of guys have played ball just uh, because of the unfortunate circumstances that we've gone through at times. And and uh, so it's been fun kind of putting these guys at different positions throughout the course of spring. And, uh, you know, eventually this will all settle in once we get the next wave of recruits in here in, in June. Coach, one last one here for you. How do you feel about the transfer portal and how it can impact college football programs? Do you see it as a positive, a negative, or something in between? And how have your feelings on that evolved over time? I've, you know, I'm something in between on on this. You know, it's um, you know, I'm a high school coach's son. You know, and I, and you have to. And no one really truly understands the transfer portal unless you're actually working the transfer portal all the time. And and uh, you know, there's a lot of opinions of it. Um, and, and what I've kind of learned from this this whole experience is, is that every single university uh, has different circumstances. Like everybody's in a different position. Uh, you know, obviously there's there's coaching changes. There's also geographical you know issues that you have to deal with. And and I think that you know each team just kind of figures out what's going to be best for them. You know, like like when I was at West Virginia, you know, like we transferred in you know fifty percent of our guys. You know, like but that's what we had to do to compete at a level with the Oklahoma and the Texas uh, in the big 12. So I, you know, like I just have over my past experience at different schools, having a lot of conversations with other coaches, I think the transfer portal can be very beneficial for some schools and some, some schools don't even need to need to use it. And uh, I just, I just know that everybody has different circumstances or in different positions than other universities. And uh, they're doing what they believe is correct and right for their current situation that they're in. Thanks coach. Appreciate your time this morning. I appreciate it.